So, uh, there are some classes that will allow us to have some kind of interesting things that work with arrays. Now, this array list is a helper class that allows us to not declare our own arrays because it will just have some kind of an array that is declared for us and it will allow us to not care about the size of the array because this class will deal with the size by the size I mean now if you declare an array of five students let's say and then you would like to increase that from five to ten you have to create a new array copy the old values from the smaller one to the bigger one and then you can continue adding more now this process is taking some programming efforts from us or if quite is the opposite I'd like to have a, a declared an array of 100 but I'm just filling only the first 10 and I'd like to shrink the size so it doesn't take that much space I just need to 5 from 100 to 5 so I need to declare another array make some copying and even worse, I have an array, but I would like to put a value in the middle of that array. I would like to increase, it's, it's an array of 5, but I would like to increase that array to put just one element, but that element is not at the end, in the middle. So that's, I just would like you to realize the effort that this last situation that I'm, I want you to think about is given us. Let's say you have this is the array. I'm just going to make a simple array of int. Now, this is an array of five elements. And let's imagine I have all the, this is the, these are the values. Now, I have declared this array. Int, if I would like to declare an array like this and put some values, it's very easy. Do this, int a, uh, that's an array, uh, new int of 5. Now if I'd like to ask the user to give us some values, and then the user gives us the values, I can use the scanner, etc., and then I have those values. Now with my program, I just would like to be able to ask the user, okay, do you like to add another value? Yes, okay, and then I'm going to ask the user, give me the value you would like to add, and where you would like to add it. And let's say the user would give me 4, that's the value, and that 4, I just would like to add it here. Now the task is, I need to declare a new array of the new size, and then copy this new array, what should it do? Copy all these ones, 1, and then 5, then put this new 4, then put the rest of the elements. So it's a lot of processing. This is all prepared and done for us in the array list. It's already available. All I need to do is instead of declaring an array of int, I make an array of array list. So I'm just going to do the simple. So this is my array list, new array list. And that's how you just declare it. That's a simple version. There are some other things that I'm trying to take away from you for now, but next week we're going to see them. These kind of less than and greater than, and then there's some kind of things. I just would like to, I'm trying to shield it, shield them from you for now, but uh, next week we're going to talk about them, inshallah. Now, this is just what is needed for me to have an array that is expendable. It can grow, it can shrink. I don't need to care about the size of the array. I just say, I just would like to have an array. And then put the values inside of it. But there's a small, a small twist. Now, if I'd like to put ints inside of it, I just need to add something. But notice now, the add is adding an object. Which means I cannot add primitive data types. If I put five, is it going to be 5? Well, yes. Now, as you can see, well, it worked. Why am I saying it's a problem? But it's not going to be just the 5, the primitive data type. It's going to be the 5, the integer data type. It's like I'm doing this. 
So the class data type int integer is going to be is the wrapper class of every every primitive data type has a class data type associated to it. It's so called the wrapper class. It's like it's it's something that is around that primitive data type. So the int there's integer. The double there's this double. The float there's this float. Think about whatever primitive data type you have. There is some class data type that is uh, byte is not there. Uh, uh, the, the long. So there's this class data types which serves the only purpose of this class data types is to be able to convert the primitive data types to class data types. Because when you add something into, into an array list, it's not a primitive data type, it's always a class data type. But I can use it without paying too much attention. I can just do something like this. Now this is add 5, is going to add 5. Now this, if I'd like to do the same instead of, I just would like to have these values here. So I'm going to instead of 5 is going to be 2 and add 1, then 5, then 7, then 0. Now the thing is, if I'd like to add this in the middle at some place, I can, because the add actually has is overloaded, because you can see here, it tells me you can add by specifying an index, and then the object, which means I'd like to add this at a specific place, where the index will work the same way as it works in an array, that means this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. If I want this to be in 3, that's what I want it to be, so it's 0, 1, 2, the position should be 3. That's where the position of this 4 is. So I'm going to put this, put it at position 3, and I'd like to have the value 4. Now what, what will happen is that it's going to show me 2, 1, 5, then 4, then 7, then 0. And the good thing is that I just add them. If I'd like to look at them and see them, it's kind of easy as well. I can use a for loop the same way for int i is equal to 0 i less than okay what's the size can i know the size well there's array dot length in for arrays but this is not in a simple array so there's not dot length but there's the size so this size is a method that is going to return what's how many elements have i added to this array list and then what I need to do is just to display them. To display them, I need to have array. Well, how do I get that? What do you get? Give me the, the element as position i. The first time i is 0, then 1, then 2, etc. And I'm going to display them all. All in, let's put them all in one line so it can be all in one line. Let's put a space. And now it's going just going to display these values, 2, 1, 5, 4, 7, 0, in one line. Let's see that. So the processing of trying to make it grow or put something inside or remove something, for example, I can also remove something. Let's just remove the 5 here. After I added this, I just would like to remove something. And that's also something I can use array dot remove and I can either specify what I would like to remove the number itself for example remove 5 but then it's going to be confusing now which 5 is it the index or the or it's going to be the index because this is an int it's going to remove 5 if I'd like to remove the integer 5 I need to put this is what I'd like to remove remove this value so it's going to look for the value now this time and remove it even if I don't know which position it is When I put new integer at the class, it means now what I'm removing, which, which method I'm calling, you see, I'm calling the one that takes the object, which is the, the value, what's inside, the element of the array. If I do this, now it means, just have a look here, what, what it means is going to show me. I mean, it doesn't. Normally, it will show me this. Removes the element at the specific position. 
So because by default this is an int, so I'm sp supplying an int, that means it's going to be the position. If I want it to be the value, I'm going to do this. Now what's interesting is that we can put an array list of a lot of different things. Int, text, student, if I want to, why not? Because all of them are objects, but of course I need to have the student. What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Remember that student that I just declared like a few minutes ago with comparable, etc. Just leave it as it is, and then I'm just going to use that. So this is new student. I need to supply with the, the ID, the GPA, and then the, the name. Let's have um, Muhammad, let's use Abdullah. So you can have a lot of different types all together in one array. And that's the convenience that you can also use with that. Now if I'd like to remove something, let me, for example, I remove an element that has a specific position, what kind of position I would like to use. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And actually I added something. So this becomes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I remove, for example, uh, f the element at position 4, this is going to remove the 7. That's what I hope. You just see. So this is 2. Then this is Muhammad. Then this is a student because this is what I'm displaying. Then this is 4, 7, 0, but the 7, I just removed it because of this. So I said, removed the 7. That's why I'm not seeing it. What you would like to remove? Now the new one, the new four is, is what? The new four, zero, one, two, three, four. So it's the zero is the new four. So it's going to remove the zero. So everything is updated automatically. I don't have to care about it, and that's the, that's the beauty of it. And that is a, a array list. It's kind of handy. It has a lot of different methods. So you have this add, you can add a specific place, add all if you have already some kind of a collection, something we might talk about later. You can clear if you'd like just to erase everything. You can clone, make a copy. You look for some objects. You search for if is this of inside of the array. You can look for that with this contains because it returns a boolean. It returns true if the list contains the specified elements. So if I'm looking for an element, if it exists, I don't have to implement the, the search. It's going to be there for me. Is it a binary search or a linear search? I don't know. If I'd like to know, I just need to go and check. Clear? Erases. Clear erases everything. Erase. Remove all elements. And add all if you have a list of elements. Now I'm adding one by one. You see, I'm adding one element at a time. If you have many, it should add at, those at one time. You can do that. But we haven't seen it yet, how to do that, this collection thing. Anyways, there's a lot of different things that we can do. You can find what is the index, the position of a specific uh, for example, I just would like to have, I'm having Muhammad there, I just would like to have the position of Muhammad, the position of uh, Muhammad is, uh, if I'd like to see this, I'm just going to do something, I hope that you remember these things, and then I'm going to do this array dot index of, and I'll say Muhammad. Now it's going to look for, do I have any object on from this Muhammad? If it finds it, it's going to find the position 1, it's going to remember to give me the position. The position of Muhammad is 1. What if I ask for something that doesn't exist? For example, uh, something like this. There's no such thing. Minus 1, because there's nothing, there's no position, it doesn't exist. Minus 1 means not found. I did not find this element that you're looking for. So there are a lot of different kind of interesting methods that are already available that I can use. Some of them we haven't spoke about them. You can remove all from a list, etc. Retain, etc. Anyways, you can uh, change an element. 
with this set there's already something in here Muhammad for example I just would like to change Muhammad from to, from Muhammad to Abdullah I can just do something like uh, array list array dot set so I need to get the position of Muhammad I know what position it is so it's one and then I can put for example to make it Abdullah what if I don't know the position of Muhammad I can look for it by doing something like this now this means give me the position of Muhammad and put it as the first element of this method set which is this is the position that I would like to change and then make it Abdullah let's display again after this thing and I'm going to see that now it was changed with Abdullah Muhammad was changed with Abdullah and that is the array list so it has a lot of different kind of uh, methods that makes our life easy if you deal with array and that's uh, kind of uh, also you can convert this to an array so it will give you an array of if you have an, uh, one data type it will be you can convert to the same data type or if you would like to have like this now this is working because this is an array of object and everything in here is from object that means I can do this kind of uh, uh, upcasting a question yes array dot this well this is I'm saying look is there an element inside this array is there something an object that has this value there's not so that's why this returned minus one if you look here this returned minus one because it wasn't found but if I put here something that exists in the list it will tell me what it is for example I can look for uh, the seven I mean seven I just removed it maybe I can look for something that exists uh, two so what is the index of two is going to tell me that the index of two is position zero or if I look for this or if I look of this student I can find it there so that's main, mainly the idea so the it gives you the position of where that element is and now if even if I don't remember what where is that position I don't have to put the value here I, I can put it myself for example like here I can put it here change the position one to Abdullah because I know that Muhammad was in position one that's why I change it to Abdullah but what if I don't know the position of of an element I can get it with this index of index of gives me the position of something so I can give me the position of Muhammad and this is what you're going to change this position of Muhammad to become Abdullah that's it for now I just would like you to try this I'm going to give you some kind of exercise just to be able to add remove things I'm going to put this here and then we're going to be practicing working with this uh, array list